folks. What I'm showing you today are my two Tesla air circuits and I'm demonstrating that they will charge not just with radio frequencies but pretty much any type of EMF, electromagnetic uh, radiation or EMR according to this little thing, the electromagnetic radiation detector. Uh, anyways, what I've got here sparking on the right is my Windhurst generator, <clears throat> which creates a high voltage charge being released between the uh, two electrodes. So there we go. Increase that. Let's see it really starts to spark. You can hear it like straining. Because it's too far away and it's getting a coronal discharge from these uh, two capacitors. You don't want to touch this thing when it's charged, these latent capacitors. You will get a heck of a shock. It probably won't kill you, but it will give you one heck of a shock. Trust me. Anyway. So. Give you a little uh, explanation of what's going on here. Discharge this so I don't accidentally uh, shock myself. I'm sure you guys will love that. Uh, anyways, this is a little electromagnetic radiation detector. That's what it says, anyways, and it gives you a value. I don't know what the value is. I read the instructions. It doesn't tell you, but it does uh, say that it operates within a certain frequency. Uh, I think it was like 20 hertz to 20,000 or something like that. I can't remember. I'll have to look it up and I'll put it in the instructable. And this is just my uh, one of my little multimeters here. It's auto and it's showing you right now the charge on my first little circuit. Now I've wired up a uh, light to this thing. I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, I've actually got it on right now and it's not doing anything. This is my second one. You guys have probably seen this in another my other video, but uh, I do have a light connected there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's just barely going. Now, switch this over here. Show you what's going on. This is my ground connection. This is just a little paperweight holding things in place. So we've got the grounds connected here, and these yellow wires are connected to my antenna here. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's just a regular. Uh, FM type antenna. In fact, I've got it hanging up here on my pool table chandelier. I'll try to bring this into view a little better. You know, it's just your standard type of antenna that you would connect to, uh, you know, an FM radio or something like that to give you better reception. So, in my other videos, I had it connected to a very large antenna that's connected to my top of my house. This is a smaller connection less uh, less wire available so there's less going to be less uh, current available um, with more antenna you're going to get more current and more voltage uh, this thing's smaller but it still works hang it back up here just to get out of the way and I'll kind of give you a little broader perspective of what we got here over here we've got a couple of fluorescent lights that I'm going to show you, uh, give you a demonstration of how turning those on will actually cause this, these uh, circuits to charge. And Alright, turn these back on. I had to go find a little piece of wire. I'll show you why here in a minute. Anyways, what I want to do is get all the juice out of these things. So I press this little button here and that brings it down to 1.9 volts on this unit. And this one has to switch on for the LED, and we'll see how the voltage is there. It'll probably be a little less. So here we have one volt there and dropping. So I'm going to turn that in the off position so it should. Uh, I can't remember if that's off or on. Anyways, we'll find out later as we get this thing charged up. Alright, I'm going to go back to this one because this one is wired 
differently. It's got basically two of these together in series, which doubles the voltage, which allows this thing to actually operate better. So we're back to looking at this thing at 1.9 volts. But I want to clear the juice completely, so I'm just going to arc this out. And that should take all the juice out of the capacitors. All right, you just short it out. See, it? all the juice is gone. All right, I'll take it off, and immediately it starts to rise. And that's just from the ambient uh, radio frequencies, EMF, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, some people are going to say it's just EMF. I mean, I'm sorry, radio frequencies. But that is not true, and I'm going to demonstrate that. Uh, right now. So we're going to let this guy charge up just with the ambient energy around here. And as you can see, I'm not getting any kind of EMF detection there. I'm going to spin my Wimshurst a little bit just to show you that it's uh, going to start to increase and you will see the EMF or electromagnetic radiation detector start to go off. Alright, see? So we're up to 0.2 volts already. This should cause, cause it to rise much faster because we're creating an electromagnetic field. And that antenna is inside of that electromagnetic field. It's picking up the frequency and giving it to those circuits. And it's being converted into DC electricity. That's what you're seeing on the multimeter right there. See my EMF is going off. I'll bring it a little closer, and you'll see it gets even higher as I get a little bit closer to it. All right, so that's my e little demonstration with the Wimshurst, and we'll do some more with that later. For now, I'm going to turn this off, arc it out so I don't get shocked, and uh, you can see the uh, detector went back to zero. And we're at 0.548, and it's slowly climbing now. There's not as much of a field for it. It's just the ambient radio frequencies and EMF in the area. 